New space race is going nuclear. Last week, NASA announced three companies chosen to build portable nuclear reactors for colonies on the moon. So how do these reactors work and what do they mean for space travel? KXAN's Eric Hendrickson visited Austin's very own nuclear reactor to find out. At the J.J. Pickle Research Campus in North Austin, in a nondescript building, one of the most powerful power sources on Earth, a nuclear reactor. This reactor is purely a research reactor. Uh, we also use it uh, to produce isotopes, uh, medical and industrial isotopes that provide a service to the state of Texas. The reactor, several stories high and about 15 feet across. At the bottom, fuel rods filled with radioactive uranium, several layers of concrete, and lots of water for keeping it cool. This view is from a hatch atop the reactor. That blue glow isn't radiation. It's electrons moving at the speed of light, slowed by the water around them. We design reactor systems to be inherently safe. Bill Charlton is the director at UT's Nuclear Teaching Laboratory. You can stand above our reactor and there's no radiation dose above that reactor core while you're standing there. Something I tested myself by squatting over this active reactor to get this footage. We operate the reactor approximately eight hours a day, five days a week. Dr. Derek Haas says the research reactor has been around since the 1990s and it's one of the most active in the nation designed to operate for a very long time, typically 20 to 40 years, uh, without any kind of maintenance or any kind of uh, uh, spare parts or anything like that. That no maintenance is important for the future and space travel. They generally built without any moving parts because once they're in space, if they break, it's gonna be very difficult to fix, right? You can't just call up the repairman and ask them to come up to the moon and go fix your reactor. Here's how they work. Neutrons moving around inside the reactor bounce off of the surrounding water. They then hit the fuel rods, which are full of uranium atoms. That causes a fission reaction to occur. Fission is when an atom splits in two. That fission reaction emits energy, about 200 million electron volts of energy per reaction. As the uranium atom splits, it releases more neutrons, which cause another fission reaction or more than one fission reaction to occur. Reactors can slow or speed up this reaction, creating more or less energy as needed. The ones that we have now are great. Uh, we're just trying to go that next step further to make it safer. Um, more efficient and, and more cost effective. In space, having a power source that is self-sustaining is essential. They're very small, very compact. They're smaller than the size of a trash can. A quantum solution that could be the thing that sends us to infinity and beyond. And it's right here in Austin, Texas. Eric Henriksen, KXAN News. All right, thank you, Eric, for that report. The professors at the Nuclear Research Lab say that despite the reputation, nuclear power generates very little waste. What waste they do produce can be, be stored safely or even recycled. The U.S. does not currently recycle, recycle nuclear waste, but several nations do. France, which generates 80% of its power from nuclear, has recycled 23,000 tons of nuclear waste since the 1970s.